Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and today let's see how many classics I can read in one day. So this video is very kindly sponsored by Serious Readers who are a wonderful company who make amazing reading lights. I'll talk about them a bit more later on in the video but for now let me tell you what I'm going to be doing today. So today I'm going to have a reading day which is something I like to do every now and then when I have a free day um, where I read all day for like 12 hours. I really love reading obviously and I also love reading things in one sitting um, and it's really nice and really relaxing to have a day every now and then that is just dedicated to reading. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. And I I thought as this is January and I want to start the year off well um, and make good progress with my reading goals for 2024, one of which is to really get my physical TBR down, I thought I would focus on books from my physical TBR um, and maybe try and read some of the shortest books on my physical TBR to get them off the list. And then I realised that a lot of the shortest books on my physical TBR are classics, so I thought today I would have a day of reading short classics. And um, so I have a little stack here, um, which I think I can possibly get through, we'll see how I go. So I have started off with um, this. This is Across the River and Into the Trees by Ernest Hemingway. So it's about quarter past nine in the morning now and I have been reading since half past eight um, and I am a little bit through this already. And then once I finished Across the River and Into the Trees I have five more books to choose from and we'll just see how I go with them. I don't really know how I feel about Across the River and Into the Trees so far. Um, this is the second book by Ernest Hemingway I have read. The first one I read was um, The Old Man of the Sea which I read several years ago um, and I didn't really like and I couldn't tell whether I didn't like it because I didn't like Ernest Hemingway's writing style or whether I didn't like it because it is mostly a book about fishing and I have a phobia of fish. So it really wasn't a good choice for my first Ernest Hemingway. Um, and then I was given this as a gift a few years ago and it's been on my TBR for ages and I thought it would be good to finally get to it. So I have started reading it and it is set in Venice. We're following an American man who is a, a military colonel um, who is in Venice and in a relationship with a 18 year old girl. So far I am slightly struggling with it. I don't love Ernest Hemingway's writing style and I'm not loving the central relationship. Um, one of the colonel's nicknames for his lover is Daughter, which is quite weird. So I'm gonna keep going with this because I do want to get it off my physical TBR and um, lots of people love Ernest Hemingway a lot so I do feel like I should give him a second chance but if I don't get on with this in the end then maybe Ernest Hemingway is not for me and that is absolutely fine. So I'm gonna have some breakfast and carry on with Ernest Hemingway and I will check in again soon. again it's now 11 30 and I've just finished reading Across the River and Into the Trees which was kind of okay um this was not really for me I feel like if I were a different reader I would have just DNF'd this after the first few chapters but I very rarely DNF every time I think about a DNF a book I remember reading And the Mountains Echoed by Carla Tassani a few years ago which for the first few chapters I really wasn't getting along with and then suddenly something clicked and I absolutely fell in love with it and it became like my favourite book of the year and I've never DNF'd much anyway but ever since then I have found it really hard to give up on a book just in case it suddenly becomes amazing or it suddenly clicks into place um, but yes Across the River and Into the Trees was not really for me. It's set just after the Second World War and we're following an American soldier, um, a colonel who is in Venice and he's kind of looking back on his time both um, in the First World War and in the Second World War and his experiences in Italy during both those wars. And he's in a relationship with a young woman who is sort of 18, 19 years old and this book is kind of about their relationship but also the colonel has a heart condition and is kind of aware that his time is limited. There are a few things I struggle with in this book. Um, one is that I found the central relationship um, a bit icky, like I said he calls her daughter um, and there are other things that just felt a bit uncomfortable about it and also 
I just didn't really believe in it. Like the way they talk to each other, I just didn't really believe either of them as people or their relationship as a thing. And then also I just, I just don't really like Hemingway's writing style. Like I find it quite muddled almost. Basically, I just think Ernest Hemingway is not very much for me. This was not a great success. However, this has been on my TBR for a really long time. So it feels like a good start to getting my physical TBRs out in 2024 to finish this off right at the beginning. Um, and then next, I think I'm gonna pick up um, Elizabeth and Her German Garden by Elizabeth von Arnhem, um, which is a very late Victorian book, I think, and a very short one. So hopefully this won't take me very long. I'm looking forward to it. I've heard really good things. But before I get on with my reading, um, I'll just take a few moments to tell you a bit about Serious Readers who are sponsoring this video. Um, so this above me here is my Serious Light, um, which is made by Serious Readers. Um, and it is a really, really good reading light. I mean, you'll see me using this throughout this video and, you know, in many other reading vlogs um, and other videos I do use it all the time and it is really good. I find it quite interesting now that I use a serious light all the time um, whenever I read in other lights I do notice the difference and how much like harder my eyes have to work to look at the page. So serious readers make really great reading lights um, and this is their high definition model I've had this for about a year and a quarter and I use it all the time. Serious lights are sort of um, special and a bit different as reading lights because they use something called daylight wave length technology which basically replicates the daylight spectrum as closely as technically possible. So reading with a serious light is more like reading in natural light. Um, it's also dimmable and extendable and I also have a diffuser ring which means I can like uh, attach this to the lamp and spread the light out a bit more. I'll show you what a difference the serious light makes when it's like pointed at a book um, because it does really make a big difference um, and it definitely makes like all the words on the page clearer for me. Serious Readers also kindly sent me a compact light, um, which I basically use as my desk lamp um, and keep on a lot of the time. That's a really great light as well. And in general, I just think Serious Readers are a great company um, and I've really enjoyed using their lights so far. I do have an offer code at the moment. So if anybody feels like getting their own Serious Light, um, then if you use the offer code, SR471 um, on checkout, then you can get £100 off a high definition light and free delivery. I'll leave some more information about Serious Readers as well as a link and offer code down below. But now let's get on with the reading. now um, coming up to 2pm and I've just finished reading Elizabeth and Her German Garden by Elizabeth von Arnhem um, which I really enjoyed. Um, so this is the second book I've read by Elizabeth von Arnhem. I read The Enchanted April um, a couple of years ago and really enjoyed that um, and this is a sort of short episodical semi-autobiographical novel um, in the form of a diary by a woman called Elizabeth um, living in Germany who is married with three young children. She doesn't especially get on with her husband who is referred to throughout as the man of wrath. So she kind of takes refuge from her life and her inequality as a woman in the late 19th century um, in her garden. I thought this was quite an interesting read um, and it was an interesting one actually to read having read quite a lot of new woman fiction towards the end of last year, um, the new woman movement being a late Victorian feminist movement and um, because Elizabeth and her German garden like kind of fits into that but it's very much like subtle subversion like there's quite a lot of bits where um, Elizabeth doesn't comment very much but we hear her husband talk about his views of women for ages and then there's like a sarcastic comment at the end from Elizabeth, um, the narrator, I mean, and the author, I suppose. So it's kind of a bit more subtle than some of the other kind of new woman novels I've been reading um, in the last year, but it was also quite effective. Um, and it's very like witty book as a whole. Um, so I thought this was really interesting. I really liked it. Um, and yeah. I'll have to read more by Elizabeth von Arnhem in the future. So the next thing I'm going to pick up is a play, and that is this. This is Les Belles Sur by um, Michel Tomblay, um, translated from French into English by um, John Van Burek and Bill Glasgow. Um, so this is a French-Canadian play, and this was recommended to me a few months ago by Keir the Scrivener. I'll link her channel down below. And um, in fact, I think she's also a fan of Elizabeth and her German garden. So double Keir recommendation today. Um, and I am really excited to read La Belle Sur. I think it should be a really interesting play. This is also the play selection for my book club this month. Um, and 
Canada is also on my list of um, countries for my international classics challenge this year. So I'm really looking forward to this. I think this should be an interesting one and I will get started now. just gone three o'clock and I finished La Belle Sur, which was a very very quick read um it probably only took me like an hour and this was fantastic this was such a wild ride of a play um I feel like it must have been very shocking when it first was put on in 1968 um and it is really really fun both very like witty and sharp and funny but also like very dark and tragic in some ways um but like small tragedies i would guess is maybe a good way to think about it like small everyday tragedies um so basically this is about um a group of women um gathering together for a stamp pasting party um so one of the women has won a million stamps in a contest but like not postal stamps early on in the play one of the women um who thinks herself very sophisticated because she's been to europe a few times this is set in montreal um she says oh they don't have stamps like this in europe and i'm like no they don't i don't know what these stamps are i think they're vouchers or coupons um and anyway she has to paste all of these stamps into books so she gathers her sisters her sister-in-law um her neighbors her daughter her daughter's friends um around her to help her paste these stamps into books so that she can like um get free furniture and items with them i think um but it's not really about the stamps it's really about all of these complicated women and all the very tense relationships between them the way the play works which i think was really really fun and would work really well on stage is that we have a lot of the group conversation but then every now and then a spotlight will shine on one character and there'll be a kind of monologue of that character which tells us more about their lives and their troubles and it kind of really captures the like frustration of being a woman in the 1960s with limited choices um, and especially we have kind of two generations well three generations I suppose in the play a lot of the middle-aged women are kind of quite critical of the way um, the younger women are behaving um, and kind of how society is changing in the 1960s which was really really interesting um and there was just a lot in this that was just great highly highly recommend this play thank you very much Kayla Scrivener this was a great recommendation and I really really love this one so next I think I'm gonna read um a short story collection um I think I'm gonna pick up The Closed Door and Other Stories by Dorothy Whipple this is a Persephone classic these short stories are from I think the 1930s and 40s I've read one book by Dorothy Whipple before Young Anne which I really enjoyed um and I always enjoy reading short stories so I'm looking forward to reading these um, I don't think this will take me too long. It's a slightly thicker book, um, but Persephone classics usually typeset in quite a nice way that I usually find relatively quick to read. So hopefully I'll enjoy this. I'm going to get started with reading it, make myself a cup of tea, and I'll check in again later. again so I've just finished reading The Closed Door and Other Stories which I really really enjoyed I love the way Dorothy Whipple writes I think she has such a fantastic writing style and such a fantastic like subtlety for character and emotion um I feel like her short stories remind me a bit of Catherine Mansfield so if you like Catherine Mansfield I think you'd like Dorothy Whipple's short stories too so there were 10 short stories in this collection um some of them very short some of them much longer um The Closed Door the title story was the longest one which is about 70 pages and is a story of a girl later a young woman called Stella um, who's been brought up by parents who didn't especially want a child that was a really strong short story and there were a lot of other short stories I liked in here too the theme of kind of like parent 
parent-child relationships and like generational divides was definitely like a big theme in these stories. I'm trying to think what my favourite story was in this collection. Um, the Closed Door and Family Crisis maybe, but to be honest I really liked all of them. I thought it was a very strong collection and yeah, I really love the way Dorothy Whipple writes. It is coming up to half six now so I've probably got like another two hours of reading and running each day so I'm trying to work out what to read. The other two books that were in my little stack at the beginning of the video were these two. Um, the Cop and the Anthem and Other Stories by O. Henry and um, Fathers and Sons by Ivan Turgenev. I'm obviously not going to have time to read both of these. I think I might just about manage to finish one, but I think I will probably actually not manage to completely finish one. Um, so I think I'm probably going to go for The Cop and the Anthem and Other Stories because um, it's a short story collection, so it will still feel satisfying if I've read like half the short stories um, in this collection today. And also I've just been really enjoying reading Dorothy Whipple's short stories, so it'd be nice to read some more short stories. I'm looking forward to this. I've heard very good things about her Henry as a writer. So I'll see how I get on with this short story collection and I'll check in again at the end of my reading day. So I've just finished reading The Cop and the Anthem and other stories. Um, it is about half nine in the evening now, so I did read on a little bit longer than I was planning to, although I did take a break for dinner. So I probably read for like 12 and a half to 13 hours today, I would say. But, you know, I didn't have that many stories left, so I thought I would just finish reading this collection, uh, which I really enjoyed. I feel like O'Henry is a very good short story writer. He's very good at, like, um having a good like turn or twist or just like having a really good sense of irony that um like is used in a very effective way at the ending of the stories if that makes sense um i really enjoyed a lot of the stories in here a lot of really interesting characters and situations um and also there was quite a nice blend of like some more serious somber stories and quite a lot of like fun happy stories like there were quite a lot of stories that were quite cheerful um and had like really yeah, just a good sense of fun to them, which I enjoyed. Um, so I really enjoyed this overall. I thought it was a good, strong collection. So in total, I read five things today, which I am pretty happy with. Um, I think my favourite one was definitely La Belle Sur, which was fantastic. Um, and then after that, probably The Closed Door um, by Dorothy Whipple, um, which was a fantastic short story collection. I did really enjoy the O. Henry short stories too, though. Um, both of them were really good collections. Um, so yeah, it's been a pretty good reading day. Nice to have got five classics off my TBR um, and I enjoyed most of them. Um, I mean The Earless Telling Way was not a massive success for me but that's fine. I enjoyed the other four very much and five classics I think is pretty good going for one day so I'm very pleased with that. So I'm going to wrap up this video now but do let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these books what you thought of them. That's all for now. Thanks very much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.